What is going on? I'm getting eaten alive by bugs. What's new? So, this video, we're making a new bag. This bag. It's like a little satchel thing. Jeez, man. There'd be nothing left of me by the time I get back. So, making a new bag. This bag. Pretty cool. More bugs, mosquitoes. I'm in the wrong place. Um, yeah, what's good about it? We got a zipper. Putting stuff in. Oh my gosh, get off me, get off me. The things I do for you guys. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my god! <laughs> I should I should have put on some bug spray. Okay, what do we got? We got a big pocket here for a cell phone or something. Big pocket on top for two nice zipper bowls. We got a zipper on the back for whatever you need. And an adjustable strap. So you can put it, you can sling it on your back. You can have it there. I don't know. You can put it on a rock. You can do whatever. Nice bag. Let's get her built. Let's get back to the... <laughs> Let's get back to the workshop and I'll show you how I made it. Before we get started here, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Every little thing you do helps me out. I'll also leave a link to the sewing pattern in the description below if you want to make this bag for yourself. So let's get on with it. So I'm going to make this bag out of 1000 denier Cordura nylon, nylon zipper, nylon webbing, nylon buckles, and number 69 bonded nylon thread. I'm currently working on the back pocket. I do a really simple zipper. Just place it on top, quarter inch seam allowance, fold it over, put a top stitch on, and do the same with the other side. I do about a three millimeter stitch on the zipper and then the top stitch I'll do about a four millimeter or maybe four and a quarter, depending on the project. I find a longer stitch length looks a lot better. I'm actually going to do something a little bit different with the front pocket. I've cut these two tabs which I'm going to fold in half and stitch to each side of the zipper. This is going to make it look good and give it a little bit of a buffer. So the overall seam allowance for this bag is a half inch. So these little stitches here are just to quickly hold it in place. So these have to be less than half inch if you don't want them to be seen. So the piece that I'm cutting here is actually the front facing pocket. I usually just cut the main body shape and then cut it where the zipper is going to go. And that zipper piece that you've sewn the tabs to is going to be stitched to it just like the back pocket. Just place them together, quarter inch seam allowance, fold it over, top stitch on top, and do the same on the other side and it'll look really good. I'll use little bulldog clips just to line everything up before I start stitching and then when I'm stitching I'll just take them off. Remember to always install your zipper poles before you seal the zipper in. I can't tell you how many times I've built something and then just forgot to put zipper poles on it. So this is 1.2 millimeter 1 inch webbing. It's actually been cut half an inch longer than the main body shape. That way when I stitch it all together there's actually a little bit of a gap between the webbing and the fabric. It just makes it a lot easier to hook accessories to. I'm just going to stitch a main body shape to the back of it. This is what's going to create the pocket and I'll just do a quick stitch all the way around the perimeter and just make sure your stitch around the perimeter is less than a half inch because as I said half inch is the seam allowance for this and I don't want these stitches seen when everything is completed. I had my glue gun kicking around from another project that I was working on, so I figured I'd just try it uh, to stick the foam to the fabric, which it worked pretty good. This is just 1.2 millimeter craft foam I got from an arts and crafts store. It's really cheap, and it just adds a lot of rigidity to the bag. The piece that we're working on here is actually going to be the inside bit of the back pocket, which is going to be between the back pocket and the inside of the bag. So one side of it is just going to have regular Cordura nylon and then this side here actually has padded foam for the padded inside pocket. This pocket is just going to be for 
a phone or sunglasses or something just so they don't get scratched up while inside the bag and it just helps separate the the items in the bag because I used the glue I'm not going to do a stitch around the perimeter just yet I'm going to wait till I've got the back zipper pocket piece in and the inside pocket piece connected to it and then I'll go around it once on the on the machine so the piece I'm working on here is going to be the inside pocket piece. It's going to go about three quarters of the way up the inside of the pocket in the bag. It's a piece of cord or a nylon, a piece of the same padded foam that's on the back piece. And then here I'm just using a piece of the, the nylon webbing as binding just to seal that edge. So I pretty much just folded it over and shot a stitch down it. And that is going to be the, uh, the edge for the inside pocket. So I'm actually going to make a sandwich of three different parts of the bag now. I'm going to have that front pocket, the middle piece there where the condora on one side and the foam on the other, and then also the zippered back pocket. I'm going to sandwich it all together and then do a stitch around the perimeter. As you can see, I stitch as close to the edge of the bag as possible because I really do not want this to be seen when the bag's put together. So this is what all your pieces should look like. You've got your front piece and then your back piece. And then I'll stitch the middle piece here in a second and we'll uh, connect these two pieces together. I'm gonna start working on the zipper gusset. So this is the full length of the top zipper. I'm gonna stitch nylon pieces to either side of that. Very important that all these little cuts and everything all line up perfectly on each side of the zipper, otherwise your bag's going to be wonky. And it's the same technique I'm using for the other zippers. You just stitch it a quarter inch, fold it over, and a quick stop top stitch on top, just like this. Here I'm just cutting the bottom gusset on the cutting table. I've been moving a lot of things around in my sewing room, so you know you can't tell here, but I'm actually sitting on the floor doing this. Because I'm using a half inch seam allowance for this project, all my little relief cuts here are going to be a half inch as well. So this webbing is going to be for the shoulder strap. It is 1.5 inches by 5 foot long. If you're kind of taller or like above average height, you're going to want to cut this strap a bit longer. I'm using two tri-glide buckles and that's going to be your adjustments. Once my straps all cut to size and got the buckles on, I'm going to stitch it to my top zipper gusset. Once that's done, I'll put my bottom gusset on it and stitch it all together, half inch seam allowance at the sides. Once all that's done, you'll be left with this kind of shape. You'll have your top gusset, your bottom gusset, and then the strap sandwich between them. I usually fold this strap up and put a little clip on it just to stop it from going everywhere when I'm trying to uh, stitch the two sides together. As for the edges, just uh, one inch binding. Okay, so I'm going to stitch around the whole perimeter. It's a half inch seam allowance. 
and it's very important that everything is lined up really good for this. As you can see I have my uh, strap all cold up inside just so it's not flying everywhere. And when you turn the bag inside out everything will strap and everything will come out so it'll be good. I finished up all these edges with just one inch nylon binding. I just did it by hand. I just went around real quick and did it so it doesn't look the best. I used paracord for the zipper pulls. Just did a cross knot, cut the length of the paracord to about nine inches and cut off the excess. I tried to record me tying the knot, but my hands just got in the way. I'm not the uh, I'm the best videographer out there. And that is the finished product. So thank you for watching. I had fun making it. Hopefully you had fun watching it, and you'll try it for yourself. It's really simple design, and I hope to make a lot more of these because I've been getting people asking me for them. So. Maybe I'll have some more videos in the future of that. But other than that, thank you for watching and subscribing and liking and take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.